Hello class. Welcome to MEC 321 Lecture Series 1, which marks the meeting edition of our WhatsApp uh, lectures. This lecture is being moderated by Engineer JJ Momo. On this lecture, we shall be discussing compression of members or compression members. The content of this lecture series are as follows. Types and uses of compression members, loadings and cross sections. Easily loaded columns, general behavior, effective length. Design procedure for axially loaded columns. Columns under combined axial loads and bending moment. And lastly, short and slender columns. Introducing what a column is. I throw a question before the class in our last uh, discussion on WhatsApp that you should be able to differentiate between a column and a strut. I'm still expecting response from the class. A column or strut is defined as a member that is the general definition. A member of a structure which is subjected to ACR compressive load. Compression members are one of the basic structural elements and are described by the terms columns, ties, stanchion or struts, all of which primarily resist ACR load. Columns a vertical member supporting floors, roofs and cranes in, building, in buildings. Though internal columns in buildings are essentially easily loaded and are designed as such, most columns are subjected to easier load and moment. As we can see in this figure, this other one is not easily loaded, it is laterally loaded. So this cannot be considered as a column. The term stress is often used to describe other compression members such as those in trusses, lattice gather or brazing. This exercise is true open to the class as our first exercise on this first lecture series. Student, can you differentiate between the figures shown below? This figure A and figure B. Figure A, you just mentioned the name and figure B, mention the name. The answer is expected to be forwarded to me on WhatsApp. Some types of compression members are shown in figure 1. As we can see, multi-story building, it is the skeleton of a multi-story building. The column withstanding the wind and then we can see here for the breezing struts and the building column and therefore industrial building we can see the struts in truss and we see crane column compression members must resist bulking so they tend to be stocky with square sections the tube is an ideal shape for such members these are in contrast to the slender 
and more compact tension members and deep beam sections. Rolled, com rolled compound and built up sections are used for columns. Universal columns are used in buildings where axial load predominates and universal beams are often used to resist every moment that occur in columns in industrial buildings. We have single angle column, we have double angle column, we have T's, these are different types of column that we have, we have channels and structural hollow sections as we see these are the common sections used for thrust in trusses, lattice gather and brazings. So how do we classify column by cross sections? The projecting flange of an I-shaped compression member will buckle locally if it is too thin, while the rest of the member remains straight. Webs will also buckle under compressive stress from bending and from shear. The reduction in compressive capacity should be obvious as the warped portion of the member rejects load and transfer it to other portions. To prevent local bulking occurring, limiting outstanding thickness ratio for flanges and depth thickness ratio for webs are given in British Standard 5950. Column cross section are classified as follow in accordance with their behavior under load. The first class, which is class 1, is plastic cross section. This can develop a plastic hinge with sufficient rotation capacity to permit redistribution of moments in the entire structure. Only class 1 section can be used for plastic design. We need to take note of this while considering what type of cross section of a column that we would need to use during our final year project. Class 2 Compact Cross Section This can develop full plastic moment capacity but local bulking prevents sufficient rotation at constant moment. Class 3 which is semi-compact cross section. The stress in the extreme fibers should be limited to the yield stress because local bulking prevent development of the full plastic moment. Class 4 slender cross section. Premature local bulking occurs before yield is reached. What are the flat elements in a cross section are classified as we have the internal elements support on both longitudinal edges and we have outside element attached on one edge with the other free elements are generally of uniform thickness but it's tapered the average thickness is used compression member are classified as plastic compact or semi-compact if they meet limiting proportion for flanges and webs in exact compression as given in uh, British Standard 5950. We have the rolled and welded column sections. As we can see in figure 3, shows this proportion which was set out to prevent local bulking. We have the width measure as B, we have the height measure as D and this is the thickness of the web and thickness of the flange. This is a universal column and this is H column and this is take, taken as box column. So these are the limiting proportion for rolled and welded the uh, columns sections for outstand for outstand element of compression flange we have the section type i will have the plastic section we have the compact section i will have the semi compact uh, section 
So what are the loads? Easier loading on columns in buildings is due to loads from roofs, floors and walls transmitted to the columns through beams and to self weight. As you can see in figure 4, these are the load through the roof is being transferred to the column, through floor is being transferred to this column, through wall being transferred to the column. Floor beam reaction are eccentric to the column axis as shown and if the beam arrangement or loading is asymmetrical, moments are transmitted to the column. Wind loads on multi-story buildings designed to the, the simple design method are usually taken to be applied at floor levels and to be restricted, resisted by the brazing and so do not cause moment. We see the way this has been arranged. This easier load which is uh, symmetrical you can see a load applied here to the web also it is being braced with a load being applied to the flange but this is unsymmetrical load is being applied at the web at the web here but at the other part of the flange which is the same thing as applicable to this uh, part uh, C but in industrial buildings, loads from cranes and wind cause moment in columns as shown in figure 4b. In this case, the wind is applied as a distributed load to the column through the sheeting rails as we can see in the figure. So what are the easily loaded compression members? The main reason for this studying of short column or short members uh, we want to look at the failure that occur in a column so the failure of a column takes place due to the any of the following stresses set up in the columns the first is direct compressive stress bulking stress combined of direct and bulking uh, stress so our general consideration when talking or discussing the failure of a column we have the compression member may be classified by length a short column post or pedestrian frail by crushing or squashing as we can see in figure 5a this will not budge because it is a short member it will only fail by crushing the squash load py in terms of the design strength is py equals to pressure times area that is the load equals to pressure times area where A is the cross section and area of the short column but a long column or a slender column fails by bulking as we can see here it is not bulging it is bulking compared to the one that happened in figure 5 uh, a which is crushing the failure load is less than the squash load and depends on the degree of slender slenderness so most practical column fail by bulking for example a universal column under easier load fails in flexural bulking about the weaker yy axis as you can see in figure 5c the strength of a column depends on its resistance to buckle or to buckling thus the column of a tabular section in figure 
5d we carry a much higher load than the bar of the cross section na area so yeah what we are saying here is though of the same weight this we carry higher load compared to this because of the cross sectional area that this member you know covers so we take this as our practical exercise we can easily demonstrate this with a sheet of a4 paper open it make it flat the paper cannot be stood on edge to carry its own weight but by the time this paper is rolled into a tube it will carry a considerable load the tubular section is the optimum column section having equal resistance to bulking in all directions pin edged straight column theoretically the value of easier load p is found by equating disturbing and restoring moment when the strut has been given a small deflection y as shown in figure 6a the equilibrium equation is written as this equals to this this is solved to give the Euler or lowest critical load as this in my next class I will be able to throw more light to how this equation is being derived so in order not to spend uh, much of our time I will want to close the class for today expecting you on board same time tomorrow thank you